That's the intro to Eva Cassidy's version of Autumn Leaves, which there are many reasons to love, not least of which being her vocal performance, but also that it's a beautiful guitar part on its own and a perfect accompaniment. And she also, in the chords that she chooses to use, gives us a real nice simplified version of a song that is often expanded by jazz musicians and actually gives you a bit of a window into what those expanded chords are doing the things that they are substituting for. I want to point out right away that we are capoed at the first fret, so every note or chord that I name is actually sounding a half step higher. The song is arguably in the key of A minor in this arrangement, arguably in the key of C. We can do the math either way. I do think it's a minor key song, but I think it's most accurate to say that the song is made of chord sequences that lead the ear to the C, and that lead the ear to the A minor. These opening chords are very strongly C major. So, as I said, we can interpret the chords strictly in C major or in A minor, but I think it makes a lot more sense to say that we start in C with a two chord D minor, a five chord G, a one chord C, a four chord F, a two chord D minor, which we reinterpret as a four chord in A minor, so that we move to E7. And then A minor. So D minor, E7, A minor is four, five, one in the key of A minor. D minor, G, C is two, five, one in the key of C. And then you might have noticed in the intro that we had a resolution from F7 to E7, which is definitely a flat six dominant, going to five dominant and resolving back to one. But because those opening chords are so but because those opening chords are so strongly C major, I think it makes sense to just go ahead and think of it as being in two different key areas. So, once again, let's walk through the intro. D minor formation, I am using my pinky for the second string note here, third fret, just because under my hand, the pinky is very comfortably sitting right there. You might find that ring finger works better for you. I don't object to that. It forces me to drop my wrist a little bit more than I feel like I want to or need to. One thing I like about this is I'm completely in position, starting off with these two notes together, fourth and first strings. And now just down a scale, pull off on the first string. Now I'll use the ring. And then a G chord, walking up in tenths. Sixth string and open B, then open A, and this fretted B and D. So, open E string, now completing C add nine, G 
G over B, hammer on, A minor chord, but you do that additional hammer on with the index finger when we get to the second beat. So our walk down, G with the pinky so I can keep the ring finger here, F7 landing index middle first, but leaning in to get the bar. E7, you can get the specific strings from the tab if you're not following this. A minor, striking five, four, two, three, one, four, two. Strike them both, slide up, open third, thumb on the fourth, open third. And then middle and ring landing on strings four, three, fifth fret. We strike, open A, four, three, two, one, four. And then this dissonant second and third string B and C at the same time. Here's the intro. Hope you don't mind the bird soundtrack. That's one thing about sitting outside, but I like it. Now, it might be worth your while to concentrate just on that intro, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the chord changes and the rest of it. As I said, you can get the specific strings from watching my right hand and following along on the tab. It's really pretty straightforward from here, but she's pretty specific about her melodic choices and which strings she's hitting, and I wanna bring out some of those things, so I'm gonna play it slowed down. Here's the verse, starting with a D minor seven. Add nine, walk up, F, D minor seven, E seven with this pattern, A minor, and watch the slide up, and then up here, we keep going. A string bass into the G, walk up, one thing going from the bridge we have this E7 sus4 and she's using this instead of in the sort of real book chords the jazz chords that people often use a 2-5 progression she's just going right to this E suspended because it's going to set up the A minor so instead of she just does this seven sus bring out that melody resolve it and now we'll walk up in tenths leading to a minor and the same 
signature lick she has. D minor 7. This time, we're resolving into C. Right? The tonal resolution to C at 9 and this bass walk up. It's just C with the pinky staying down if you haven't picked that up yet. So we have this bass walk on the C chord. And an F. D minor 7. Again, that melodic move hitting the suspended note, so here's the D minor, D minor 7, E7, watch my ring finger, A minor, walk down using the pinky, D7 over F sharp, It's a beautiful song. It's a great song to know for a whole variety of reasons, but Eva Cassidy's version is just beyond stunning. And as I said, it's a beautiful example of a well-constructed accompaniment guitar part that has melodic interest and movement to it. And really a great illustration of the kinds of things you can do with open chords and a basic harmonization of a song that might have, in some other renditions, more chords, but it works beautifully in this arrangement. Specifics are in the tab. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I hope you're enjoying these casual videos. I'm certainly enjoying sitting out here, and I'll see you next time.